Welcome to the ninth section of the Framer Playground course. Today we're gonna learn something really cool. We're gonna create some really nice parallax effects on a website. As you can see here, when I scroll down, you can see that multiple elements are moving at different speed. And this logo right here is sticky. So it creates this really nice 3D effect that you can see on a lot of websites, such as the Apple website. And on top of that, we're gonna learn how to create a really nice transition at the beginning of the loading of your website. As usual, the starting template is provided. So 9.begin is what you're gonna need. And here we have the main page, as well as all of these elements that we want to apply, both the parallax and the stagger animation. Let's go to the code editor and create a new file called landing page. I'm going to select everything and delete the code. Then I'm going to import star as react from react. Then we're going to import the design component, which is the page. So import curly braces page from quotes dot forward slash canvas. And then let's create our component, export function, landing page, parentheses, curly braces. Then let's return the page component. So already you can start to preview this and you're gonna see the design component that you have imported. Then you can already see the preview of your page. I'm going to set this to 1440. So roughly this and set the height to roughly 800. Now I'm going to close this because it's way too big. I will only preview when I need it. So now we have a page, it's very static. What we wanna do is to use the scroll behavior. Just like a landing page on a website, you have to be able to scroll. So in order to do that, I'm going to import the scroll from Framer. So import scroll from Framer. And then I'm going to wrap the page inside a scroll component. If you save this, it's going to format your code. And if you preview, you're gonna see that we have a box for the scroll. And this is what we can do at the moment. We need to set the size correctly for the scroll. So for the scroll, I'm gonna set a width of 1440 and the height of 1000. So let's preview. So you can see that you can scroll, but we don't really know the size of the content. So we need to tell here for the page component, what kind of height it's going to have. I'm going to set a height to 4,500. Now this should look much better. So I can scroll my page to the bottom and it feels exactly like a website. Let's go back and now we need to figure out what is the scroll position so that we can use the Y position and apply that to create a parallax effect. In order to do that, we're gonna need the use motion value from Framer. Then we're gonna set the Y constant. So const Y is equal to use motion value, parentheses, and we're gonna set the default to zero. Then we're going to connect the Y position to the scroll position. So on the scroll component, we're gonna set content offset Y is equal to Y. So now we're gonna use the unscroll event to receive that position. So unscroll is equal to function, parentheses, curly braces. And here, just to see what we're gonna get in terms of data, we're gonna do console log parentheses y dot get parentheses. Let's format the code by saving. And now we have this nice format. And let's take a look at our console. So when we scroll, we can see that we're getting the scroll data. And that's exactly what we're gonna need in order to apply our parallax effect. So let's use that to our first element, which is the logo. So we're gonna import the logo right after the page. And as usual, because we want to reposition the logo, we're gonna put that inside 
a frame. So we're gonna set the frame, then close the frame, and in between, we're gonna set our logo. It looks like we forgot to import the frame component, so we're gonna do that from here. So frame, and now that it should be fine. We're gonna style this properly. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and see what it's gonna look like. So the first thing is I'm gonna set the background to nothing. Then I'm gonna set the top position to 168. So now it's pushing down a little bit. Then I'm going to center my logo in the middle using the X position. So center, curly braces, the X position. You can barely see it because I made this very small, but now I can put it back to 1440. And now it should be fine. So we like this logo to be sticky. So we're gonna have to import use transform to turn this Y value into a value that can cancel the scrolling position. So let's go ahead and import use transform. And then right after the line use motion value, we're gonna set const logo Y is equal to use transform parentheses Y so that we can use the Y position and then value arrow value divided by minus one. The minus one is going to allow us to cancel whatever positive value that we receive from the Y constant here. So we're gonna apply this logo Y to our frame that surrounds the logo. So right after top 168, we're gonna set Y is equal to curly braces, logo Y. Now we can test it out. And as we scroll, you can see that the logo is sticky. Awesome. So with this technique, we can just apply to the rest of the design components. So let's do all of them at once. So we have about four more elements. So I'm gonna go ahead and import play, video, text, and then button. If you remember in the layers, you'll find all of these elements that we want to apply the parallax on. So we have the logo and then the play video, text, and then the button. For the speed of each of these extra elements, we're going to copy exactly this line of code. So we can just select this line, shift, option, down arrow, four times. So now we have five elements in total. Now we can customize for each of these elements one by one. So play Y, video Y, text Y, button Y. And each of them will have different speed. Obviously we're not gonna use a minus because minus means we're canceling. And if it's a positive number, the bigger the number, the slower it's going to get. So let's try with the play button, we're gonna make it the fastest. So we're gonna set it to divided by two. And the video, we're gonna set to three, four, and then five. And then all that's left is to apply the frames for each of those design components. We're gonna select all three of these lines of code and we're gonna use the same technique. So shift, option, down arrow. One, two, three, four. And we're going to apply each of those elements. So this one is play Y and this one is the play component. Then the video Y, video component text Y, text component, button Y, button component. For the play, we're gonna set the top at 402. And then instead of using center, we're gonna set to right of 422. For the video, we're gonna set 305 for the top. For the right, we're going to set 295. For the text, 
top to 94 and then left 370. For the button, we're gonna set the top 720. Now let's play that. Let's uh, remove the console. We see that the, we have a problem with the play button. So we're gonna go back and fix that first. So whatever frame is written after is going to be on top. In this case, we want a video to be before the play button so that the play button is after the video. So I'm gonna save this, make sure that there's no space here and then play. Now I should see my really nice parallax effect. Just one tiny mistake here with the logo. We're gonna do the same. So we're gonna put the logo at the very end because that's the one on top. And voila, we have our beautiful parallax effect. Now I just wanna mention that all of these values are fully customizable and they totally depend on your design element. If you design your own landing page with your own design components, you should play with these values that fits best with your design. So that's it for the parallax effect. Now let's do the animation on page load. So we're gonna use variants and we're going to apply variants to the parent container and then we're gonna apply stagger to the children. But first, let's do a super simple opacity change. So const variants is equal to curly braces. So now we're gonna have two state. The first one is hidden and curly braces opacity zero comma show opacity one. That's it. Let's apply the first animation. We're gonna put that into the parent container, which is a scroll. Let's set variance is equal to variance. Then initial is equal to quotes hidden. Then animate is equal to quotes show. Save and format. And then let's play. Refresh, you're gonna see a nice opacity change. Now let's apply the stagger. As we've learned before, inside the states, we can add transition. And here I'm gonna set curly braces. We have two parameters that are really important. So stagger children. This is the wait time between each of the element. Then we're gonna add delay children at 0.5. This is the delay that all of the children elements is going to wait after the parent container is animating. Next, we're going to apply the variance into each of these elements. Here's a nice trick. I'm going to select from the open bracket frame and you can see all of these elements are highlighted. So select from here to here, command D, command D, command D, command D. And then from here, I can use the right arrow, space, variance is equal to curly braces, variance. Voila, it applied to all of them at once. After this crazy magic tricks, I still have to explain to you what happened. Now we're just applying the variance to the video, to the play, to the text, button, and logo elements. That's it. We don't need to do initial and animate because the variants pass those things to its children as well. So that's what's nice about the variants. Now let's test it. I'm going to close the console and then refresh this. See, one after another, it's animating. Now let's just customize the animation a little bit. We're gonna go to here, I'm gonna save to format it. And in addition to opacity, I'm gonna set Y to 30. And here, I'm gonna set Y to zero, comma. And then for the transition, I'm going to add ease, set ease out, comma, and then duration 1.5. Now let's take a look. I'm gonna save this and then play. Now we have this really nice 
transition with opacity but also with a Y position that's moving. Let's look at it again. We're gonna refresh. We have our nice stagger animation. Of course, you can customize your design and your code and your speed, but we also have this really beautiful parallax effect. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I really, really wanna see what you're gonna build with this, with your own landing page. Just play with as many elements as you want build something cool and please show to me on Twitter. I would love to see your work. So we have one final session from this course and it's going to be the 10th one. We're going to learn a lot about API data. So we're going to use the fetch function and we're also going to learn how to install libraries. We're going to install the style components library and also we're going to learn how to save persistent data, create production ready components and play around with some Lottie animations. So I'll see you in a final session.